I would say manifest what you're what you're thinking. So think big and, and manifest it and put it out there. It can happen. Welcome to Clicks and Bricks Podcast. We talk about the entrepreneur mindset. If you get one shot at this, what kind of shot are you going to take? If we forget who we are, they're going to forget who you are. And you've got an adversity story that's out of this world. Everything from that Main Street brick and mortar to that billion dollar manufacturer. Today we have the Caravan Social Club. We're going to be talking about all kinds of fun stuff about the, how they started in 2005 in a caravan, grew 2011, changed their business plan, and again changed their business plan in 2020 with the pandemic. How are we doing today, ladies? Great. Thanks for having us. We have hello, Claud- hello. Claudine and Justine with us, and also known as JJ. Claudine, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and about how you got started with Caravan? Sure. So I'm coming to you from Brooklyn right now, Brooklyn, New York. And Caravan originally started in New York City. Uh, We started as an RV back in 2005. That was a store inside that RV. It would travel around and it had all sorts of different products from all sorts of cool brands. And we would drive around um, the city. We would go to the tri-state area um, and sell items, but found that it was a little tricky to deal with figuring out what would sell, what wouldn't sell. But we love the idea of telling people about these awesome brands. So we always kept that in mind and we have uh, changed over and reformulated through the years, but our whole uh, project and core is uh, telling people about really cool brand discoveries. We work with creatives, influencers, we get them in to our spaces that we create. We basically create these experiential spaces like the RV, um, studios, content houses, um, redevelop hotel room stays um, and fill them and curate them with cool products. Um, And we do the storytelling of those brands to the creatives. So now fast forward to Um, pre-pandemic, we were in a hotel space. Um, The pandemic happened. Unfortunately, we had to go virtual, but we still love uh, that social interaction, being able to meet people, but we were trying to figure out a way to do that safely. We uh, last year bought ourselves an RV again, a 1978 Shasta, and now we road trip as one of uh, the experiences that we do. So Janine and I go out and we will road trip uh, to different places with uh, different brands, telling their stories, getting creatives coming in, telling their stories. Um, and uh, we have the RV as well as some content houses, um, both in New York and in Minnesota right now and expanding um, that. So lots of different experiences that we offer. Fantastic. And JJ, you weren't part of caravan back in 2005. Can you tell us a little bit of the story about how you became, and you're, a, I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you're a partner now in the caravan social club. Is that correct? So I met Claudine, I think around 2008, 2009 through a mutual friend. And we were told to meet one another because we were both creating spaces and concepts and the experiential where that was, we were doing all this content homes, all this fun stuff before it got chic and trendy and everyone's kind of doing it. So we met, we started collaborating. And I think, I think we finalized this uh, two minutes prior to this call was 2018, really started to work together in a more collaborative um, partnership space. And when we We're going into our best year yet in 2020 of January Uh, for our content studio. We, you know, had to pivot real quickly in that virtual space and hence the Caravan Social Club came to fruition. Fantastic. So pandemic comes along, you've got to change gears a little bit and now you're back to the RV, but you're still creating experiences for brands that might be in the RV. It might be in one of their spaces or it could be in a hotel room or a convention hall, anything along those lines. Is that somewhat accurate? Yeah. Yep. As long okay. as it's fun. That's as long our, as it's fun. That's, yeah, that's the key to anything we do is it has to be something that people walk out of either inspired or, some, you know, they're smiling for some reason. They were just inspired. They just had fun. They just right. discovered something. That's like, that's a key kind of part of our DNA is that, there has to be some inspiration 
and fun that come out of the work we do. I think one of my favorite moments during the whole 2020 trying to refigure out everything is we did this virtual photo shoot because people would come to the studio. They would, you know, come for content days. They would bring three outfit looks because, you know, production is really expensive to get a photographer to, you know, book out hair and makeup, to book out all the different spaces. It takes time and it's, you know, it's costly. So we would do this complimentary for fellow creatives so that they can get free content and obviously plug in where it made sense to the brands that we were working with. So obviously like hair and makeup was an easy task for us to be able to have them experience it, say, hey, this is amazing, Um, wardrobe, accessories, even locations that we worked with. So fast forward, we weren't really able to do a lot of that. So we had to figure out how do we do a photo shoot, still give this platform to creatives to be able to still do what they love to do, but do it virtual and do it in the virtual space. So we did it through Zoom. We had one of our in-house photographers, Thomas Concordier, who we work with on a lot of the different projects and campaigns that we do with brands. He works for Getty Images. You've also seen him on America's Next Top, Next Top Model. Uh, he's pretty much photographed every famous face and supermodel that there has been. And, you know, we did this where we filmed and photographed 62 creatives in the course of two days where everyone had just a 10 minute slot. We went into onto Zoom. Thomas was in the in the uh, studio and, you know, everyone was like, what? Wait, we're, we're photo shooting. We're photo shooting. And he was so great with like connecting with them and telling them and, and just hearing what they were going through at that moment. And it was so refreshing because not once and this is never this has never happened again. Not once did anyone cancel, everyone showed up on time, which is like unheard of. And we walked away with people saying, thank you for doing this. I needed this. I needed to have that for myself again, to create, to do what I love and and give them that platform for it. So it was kind of one of those things where we're like, all right, we were able to do 62 people in the course of two days, all throughout the country. We covered 50 States. So we were like, how do we how do we kind of, you know, replicate this and be able to run with it? Because we would never be able to do that in person. So it was one of those eureka moments of saying, okay, because we're in this moment, we did this, but we were also able to realize that we can expand and, you know, be able to have so many more touch points across the nation, not just in New York. So kind of what pivoted towards going back to the old school days of the caravan with the RV, which we which we nicknamed Bonkers, by the way, because of the 1970s board game that we put on Etsy. And, you know, we're like, why don't we road trip and meet some of these creatives that we were able to, you know, touch base with during this whole trip and kind of just blossom into this beautiful project and got to work with some amazing creatives and some awesome brands along the way. That is phenomenal. I think, you know, in film, you've got a director and a director of photography and people lose the fact that a photographer is also the director. He's, he's doing both roles and you can have a photographer being the director through a virtual experiment like you guys did, which is phenomenal. I think it's great. Now clicks and bricks is basically born out of the concept that in the future, we're always going to have the online aspect and the brick and mortar aspect. And before we talked a little bit about some of the stuff that you've done, and you did a really cool campaign for a dance studio. And basically what I'm trying to do is just frame out some of the concepts that you could execute for a brick and mortar business. Cause I am a firm believer that post pandemic brick and mortar business is the only way they're going to survive is that they also have some kind of experiment experience, good food or a good product or a good service is not going to be enough. It's going to have to be something that's an experience to get people off their couch, to get dressed, get in their car and drive somewhere going to have to be something really unique and special. And you guys knocked it out of the park with a dance studio in your local area. Can you tell the audience a little bit about what you did for them? And I know that there's a lot of dance studio owners out there watching that they could maybe take some of those tidbits and maybe execute something, either hire you guys to do it or do something similar on their own. I mean, I love, I love just, just go say, I love a good dance session. And I miss the OG days of being able to go to an awesome 
nightclub or just like an old dive bar that just played really good music like pianos and just have like a great little dance sesh. So we actually worked with Legworks Dance Studio out in Long Island when we were doing our whole road trip because we were going out to the Hamptons and also worked with Water Drinker, which is an awesome, I mean, they they have a huge sunflower field. So you can imagine all the content that they kind of generate with different influencers coming into that space to take these beautiful photos in a, fl- a sunflower field. Uh, but they also have a range of activities. They sell obviously flowers and have greenhouses, but they have a, a petting zoo, a petting farm. They, when we were there, trampolines, they, they bouncing trampolines. trampolines. Um, I mean, I was floored and I, that was like 10 minutes away from where I grew up and really never got to fully experience all the different fun activities. But we ended up working with Legwork Stand Studio and it was just like meeting a really good friend out there and telling them what we were doing. And they were like, oh, let's do something really fun and collaborative. Let's do a flash mob. I'm like, I would love a flash mob. So uh, they had some of their senior students that basically came out of the caravan, came out of the RV, came out of you know the sunflower field. And we were able to get that not only on video, but also through a drone. So we had this beautiful video to present them. And then obviously we do a lot because of our PR backgrounds, take that content and then push that out to different publications for pickup. So we got that placed into Bella magazine. So, you know, Legwork Dance Studio, Danielle, who's the founder, along with her mother, you know, they've been around forever. They have such a robust group of students, but they were also looking to do different avenues of pickup. So they were like, how do we get other content creators to talk about us? How do we get PR placement? So we kind of did this very outside the box experience. It came together beautifully. And, you know, we were able to give them all these different touch points that they can then utilize into their own marketing efforts. And also um, just to go back to the whole concept of brick and mortar, Um, something that we really believe in is when we're on the road is to work like where we actually take the caravan often has been either to places like water drinker that Janine just talked about or places like in LA, one of the spots where on Abbey Kinney, it was a a house of Novogratz, which is, was a brick and mortar pop-up store that they did for this furniture brand. We parked outside of there. Uh, so we're, And then another spot was a garden store that we parked outside of. So the guests came in uh, in our RV, but then they also were able to film and produce content inside these brick and mortar shops. So we brought the experience of the caravan to these stores. So we know the power and the importance of having those stores. And then, you know, but maybe layering that obviously with an experience that can exist physically where they're going in in real life, but then also they're producing all this content that would live, you know, again in social media. And I get it with a lot of different brands that they're trying to figure out what's the next best trend. Where should I be? Is it TikTok? Is it Facebook? Are we still doing Facebook ads? Do we do YouTube videos? And it can be so overwhelming and everyone's always trying to, figure out the whole influencer space and working with content creators. And it's, it's not easy. It has to be consistent. You have to right. understand and have knowledge of how to pitch and what it looks like as a brand ambassador and then how to quantify the content you get back. So that's why we love working with brands that have that mind space of saying, I get it. I understand I have to kind of push myself into uncharted territory and water but I want to work with somebody that does have that experience and also the relationships that we can pull through for all these brands to kind of really get the touch points that they need. Right. And we haven't got the opportunity to work together yet. And we might someday, I kind of get the impression that you're, you're solving two issues for businesses. One, you're a modern day sign spinner or balloon goon, right? You're gaining attention to the store, but then you're also creating long-term content for repeated attention over long periods of time and and maybe they can use that for ads that they're going to create or something else right this is not i say all the time we don't live in an or world we live in an and world this is not something you're not going to do this or facebook ads it's probably both right that pretty accurate we try try to implement we also try to work 
um, with, you know, other outlets like Talk Shop Live, um, which is all about social selling. So it's a live show. And that is something that while we were at a brick and mortar store, we worked with a beauty brand that came in and we did a live show with them. You know, we did live shows while we were actually in the you know RV. We would pull it aside and do a whole thing. But those are things that can be done um, at brick and mortar stores. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Maybe they don't have a host. Maybe they don't have like that. Um, story that they want to tell to kind of showcase the product. But that's something that we love to do is we can like show up in our RV, um, you know, go inside and tell that brand story live and do some social selling so that say that store is in Los Angeles. Now they can have customers all across the world, all across the country, seeing what's available in that store. And that's becoming such a big trend is, you know, going live and saying like, here's what's in my shop today. Um, and we love, we love to do that and offer that. And we also have an Amazon influencer shop. So if there's certain, um, brands that might, you know, small businesses that might also sell on Amazon, um, but they kind of have their showroom set up in a store, we can easily go into that store. And again, you know, do a live on Amazon or on Talk Shop Live um, or both and, you know, offer that to uh, customers across the country um, and kind of figure out what that curated experience is around that um, that selling aspect. Fantastic. And I'm sure I'm a-, a lot of people are uh-huh. conscious about budgets. So <laughs> to your point, Ken, when you're, you're talking about <clears throat> getting content, we sometimes work with brands where, you know, they might be small. This is a huge investment for them, but we're like, okay, we're going to get you content for the rest of the year. So you have right. all of this to repurpose. You have all these relationships that you're going to need to get introduced to and hope you can build on the relationships. And like me and Claudine, we'd love to sit back, you know, hang out on Instagram at night when we screenshot back and forth, you know, check this out. Look who's doing a collaboration with, you know, this influencer or these two influencers had paired up with the brand that we introduced them to do something else. And it's not about like, these are my relationships. These are my contacts. These are our brands that we work with. It's like, we love to introduce awesome people to one another to do awesome, creative content. Wonderful. So I asked you before we started, is there any question I shouldn't ask? And you you left it all on the table. So I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. And we like to talk about mindset on Clicks and Bricks of the Entrepreneur. And you were talking, Claudine, about the going live aspect, right? Now, when you go live and you're selling a product, it's you're, you're going to have a lot of you know self-doubt and all of these emotions when you're going to do that, for the, especially if it's the first... 20 times that you've ever gone live trying to sell a product on video, right? It's, it's a lot of challenge. How do you convince somebody to have the faith that it's going to work when they've been on their live for five or 10 minutes and there's nobody watching the video? Do you give them any kind of coaching in that? Or how do you explain to somebody, Hey, when you start, it's going to be really, really slow. And you just have to have the faith that this will work over time, but you got to keep, keep doing it. Do you have to coach your clients through some of that? um, meager beginnings kind of stuff that they're going to inevitably have to deal with. How do you, how do you overcome it? Or how do you coach them to overcome it when they first start and they're not seeing results? They have to keep going before they're going to see results, right? Sure. So I think that the first thing that we've learned is that you have to have a really good pre-video. Um, so for some of the lives that we've done, we made videos beforehand to get people excited. You know, they're kind of fun and it's like, Hey, we're going to be doing this here. Um, so, you know, pre advertising, this is about to happen is super important, both in video and just on story, like anywhere you have social media, you want to say like, we're about to go live, you know, so that you can have that. We also always like, it's great just to have some team members join because that always makes you feel a little better if you're getting like thumbs up and you know um comments that way it just you know helps with the the confidence building but know that you know with these live shows they're not always um viewed right then and there they're saved and then viewed afterwards sometimes so you might only get 10 people potentially i don't know during a live show but that's okay because then 
later, hundreds can watch it afterward, you know? So, and then you can reuse the content and you're learning every single time you're doing it. So you get better and better, you know, um, remembering to repeat yourselves because on live shows, uh, people are coming in at all sorts of times. So someone might just drop in for a minute and you could sell them something. Someone might be on from the beginning. Someone might come on the end. So if you're selling, you know, something you want to repeat the price, what the benefits are, you know, why, why they should get this item. You don't want to have too many items and you want it to be visually interesting. You know, you don't want to just be standing there or sitting there and, you know, showing a product. You want to be enthusiastic, excited. You want to look at questions that come in. So if a question comes in about something, answer that question so you can really um, get the audience excited um, during your live. You know, you could say like, hey, I have a question from JJ out in Minnesota. Thanks, JJ, for joining. You know, and then tell them, yeah, a lot of modeling is great. Um, you know, you want to show them how the product works. You know, JJ did something. We did something with a tahini company once. And, you know, she's like there with the chef mixing it up in the kitchen. You know, like they're showing different recipes that can be made with a tahini sauce. So she never had this before. But it was like she was like trying it and showing it. And, you know, it's it's just getting enthused about and, and really being able to get some close in sh uh, shots of whatever it is that you're selling is really important. You don't want to be having the camera all the way far in the distant and then no one can see what you're even trying to sell. And the right. founder is only going to know their brand the best. However, sometimes founders are just not great spokespeople. So you can also go out to fellow content creators and talent and see if there's a brand ambassador that you can work with to represent your brand that you feel comfortable with that will embody the overall ethos of your brand, of your product, of your service. So there's a, a lot of ways to go around it. I always think that, you know, having the founder or, or you know, the co-founders speak for themselves is always going to be the strongest. But, you know, you can always do fellow content creators and talent to work as your brand ambassador. And we actually work with a lot of those fellow talents that are on QVC and HSN that are brand representatives of, you know, different products and uh, different services. Yeah. And like, I think also just take a risk, you know, like when we were doing our virtual caravan social club show, um, we, you know, during the pandemic when we didn't have the RV and we didn't have opportunities to have people in real life, we just had this virtual show and we would literally have founders of brands come on and we would mix it in with influencers and they would tell their stories. And then we would, and it was wild because while they're telling their stories, you know, there were so many questions. Like we had a CBD beauty brand and, you know, some people never knew what CBD beauty is and all of a sudden they had so many questions, you know, so they're answering questions live. You know, we had Rise, which is one of our favorite coffee brands, um, you know, and we had sent a bunch out to some of the uh, musicians and creatives that were going to be performing that night during our live show. And they were like drinking in and, you know, showing how they could even make cocktails with the coffee. So it was like fun. And it's just trying, they had never done something like Caravan Social Club before, but they tried it and they had such a fun time, you know, being able to show their product. And then they had that video so that they could use it again and again. So, you know, definitely to all those brands and stores out there, um, you know, I think taking a risk and trying new things is, is one of the first things I would say, because, you know, with technology, like we, we have to deal with getting people into the stores, getting people online onto social media. And soon we're going to be dealing with like web 3.02 and like having to deal with getting people to the metaverse. So it's better to like, at least for now, really try to, um, you know, uh, differentiate yourself with trying new things um, in the stores. And collaborations are really an awesome way to do that is, you know, you might have a store and you might not sell, maybe you're a plant store. You might not sell fashion, just say, uh, but a fashion brand comes to you and has a product with, you know, plants and, you know, um, something that could really work. Um, like maybe it's something for Earth Day. So they have something on a T-shirt all about Earth Day. So it could work with the plant shop. Maybe it's like time to take in and say like, hey, I'm going to try that collaboration. Because if you put both brands together, you have double the audience. So that clothing store might not have a brick and mortar store. Maybe they can't afford a brick and mortar store, but they have a pretty strong audience so think that way too 
um, you know, as, as a store, like how you can collaborate with other brands to, to kind of grow your audience as well. Cross pollinating okay. is what we so like to So to summarize call. that one, if you can cross brand and double your audience right out of the gate, that that's a huge one. If you can take, uh, someone that's not necessarily in competition, but in line with your product and your mission, you can double your audience by doing a live event co-branded together. That's also going to cut your budget in half, right? Because now two yeah. people are dealing with it. Get over yourself. Just don't judge yourself and then take the risk, I think, are the three, the three key, yeah. the three key components that you guys came out. And that one, the big one on don't judge yourself is that there's only 10 people in your live. Don't worry about it. You're still creating content for your brand. that You're going to, you can see you reuse sometimes for years, right? I mean, I've written an article 15 years ago that still gets me business today, right? So keep making content, keep pushing it out there, keep getting out there, and then things will continue to roll. Yeah, and you just don't know. Like, it was so funny say I was watching one of the creatives that we work with. She was joking. She was saying, like, that her dog got more views than she recently did. Like, she made the video for the dog. She puts it up on TikTok, and the dog, you know, got all these views, and she's working so hard at, like, you know, making content. Um, but it's just, like, funny. Like, sometimes what hits and what doesn't hit. Like, even with a live, you might get, like, 200 views on one live, and then the next one, maybe it's the time you know everything has a, a you know a percentage in in what the success rate of something is like if you did the first live at 12 o'clock and then you try to do one at five o'clock that also might change things so you just never know you know you have to just try different times um different titles even the way that like i said like doing things ahead of time advertising but even the title of the show can uh bring in an audience so you just have to keep tweaking things and see what works um for it's sure. Also, it's also about the power of the relationship too. For instance, Claudine curated um, for one of the clients that we work with, Food for Life Global, which is a nonprofit organization that helps feed children um, uh, that are in need. For five dollars, you're able to, you know, feed 20 kids. So it's it's pretty impressive, all through plant-based meals. And we did this live with an actress. I forget her name. Do we do you remember what her name was? Was it she Izzy was, or which one? Izzy, yeah. it, it was Izzy, and she was doing a live with one of the founder, Paul. Um, and you know, they had this great conversation on Instagram Live, and then Izzy was promoting a, a, a new TV show, and she went on to Jimmy Kimmel and talked about her philanthropical, you know, her organizations that she's supporting, and then you know, plugged Food for Life Global into that. So the power is there. Izzy. thank you izzy yes <laughs> yes but i mean that's what we love and people think sometimes what we do is like oh my god it's so much it's not going to hit this and that but you you never know what's going to so you always just try keep on doing it be consistent i mean that's what's hard you have to show up for not only your brand but for yourself and once that consistency you know is achieved then you start building on these relationships and then that's when you start getting from 10 views to 20, to then you got a couple of hundred that are logging on because you're being consistent every Thursday at three o'clock, people are coming to tune in for you. Yeah, right. and I think just one other really important thing to us um, is just to take care of those relationships, take care of those collaborations, take care of those wonderful people like Izzy of the world that you know are so wonderful to like do something, give time, and then actually like speak about it. Really, we're so engaged and speak about it again. You know, follow through and see what else they're up to next. You know, how can you support them? Like our big thing is um, we don't want people just to be billboards, you know, in a way for the brands that we work with. We don't want them just holding up a, you know, a can of coffee and being like, this is great. You know, we really want to know what that story is behind that person. You know, are they a musician? What charities do they support? What do they care about? Are they vegan? Are they vegetarian? Are they, you know, uh, all about climate change? Are they a designer on the side? Do they write a book? Like, this is so important for us. And that has really gone away, um, is that social connection um, of like really caring about who people are in, you know, on the web, you know, and like, you know, trying to trying to support things that they care about. So it's so important, like, I think as a message to stores is like, if you're working with influencers, if you're working with creatives, see how you can tell their story to how you can support one another. Not that they just come in 
and we even say this about the models you know like models are um you know they're used to putting on clothes and taking beautiful photos but those models have awesome stories like we did a whole model series and i mean it's you know just the work that some of them are doing in the charitable space was incredible or writing books or chefs on the side. So it's, it's so important just to like hear people's stories too, that you're working with um, and, and telling those too, because it can only, you know, you only help one another that way. You have to stay wildly creative all of the time. For me, changing from operations mindset to a creativity mindset is almost impossible. How do you manage staying in a creative mindset a lot of what we do 50 percent or more of what we do is based on organic and authenticity so we can't regulate that you know like if we have someone come to an event or come to an experience we can't say you have to post this you know if we're not paying them if we're paying them and we worked on a contract ahead of time of course but you know a lot of what we like to do is that initial engagement with them and then they go off and they create you know, a beautiful contract uh, relationship with the brands directly. Um, so it's, you know, sometimes hard to see the initial ROI, but, you know, it's important to, the most important thing to do is to use that creativity to build this incredible experience that will guarantee that ROI, you know, like, so people have that feel good, inspiring, um, really awesome brand discovery experience. So then they're already motivated to create that content, create those impressions, you know, get, uh, promote the uh, promo codes, all the things that kind of go into the types of experiences that we do, um, you know, have a great live. So they're selling product too from that experience. Uh, all those, all those layers um, certainly help. And then you, you know, you have to fuse that, but to kind of separate it, I mean, it's, it's always the ROI is always driven by the creativity. So even though they're separate in a way, you have to use your creative hat to be able to drive where you're going to get those analytics from the ROI from, and not everything works. You know, sometimes we say we're ahead of ourselves on, on this, you know, event or this experience, like, and then we see someone else do it a year later and, you know, <laughs> it, it was, Oh man, you know, we were ahead of ourselves on that. So that sometimes does happen, but, I think we, I think JJ and I have gotten really good at trying to figure out, okay, this is a roundabout what we're going to, what you're going to get from this, um, you know, and you're always going to find out who really, we do sampling in a way um, and feel marketing in a way too, that it's going directly into someone's hand. There's so much money spent on field marketing and sampling nowadays, and you don't even know who got it. You don't even have an idea of the demographics of who received the product, it's just like bands showing up, giving out a ton of product. And we really understand who actually received product, who actually showed up at an event. So that is a huge, huge part of the ROI. It's just understanding who actually experienced the brand um, from the start. And I will say like, you know, to Claudine's point, we are staying ahead of the curve when we try to. So I really don't think there's somebody out there right now that's putting and bundling in all these different touch points. Cause what are we up now? 17 touch points before an actual conversion because we're so oversaturated and we have an attention span that's going down to seven minutes now. So, you know, we're not only offering like consumer sampling and also influencer content, but also PR placement and to be able to see how well received your product is and what people are talking about it authentically and not just because they were paid to do this endorsement, which a lot of people can see through. Yeah. And I think too, when we do live shows, we're just like, I mean, we're here right now with you and we're just like, you know, we're real, like, you know, we're, you know, we, we like to have work life balance. We try to really understand what your product is all about. So if we're out there doing your live for you, you know, I feel like, you know, it's not like, you know, we're very relatable. So there's something, you know, to that as well. Um, I think brands are trying to, they hear, you know, they, a lot of it's user generated content is such a big thing. And I think that JJ and I too, besides all the creatives that we work with are really great use, you know, users of products. You know, we get in there, we really try to only talk about product we really love that we think is innovative, that we think we 
we use ourselves. Um, so when we're doing a live, you know, we're we're trying to also produce really great user generated product and 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 show and show that. So I think that that's important too because there's so much. Fortunately, there's so much fakeness and airbrushing and all of this on social. Um, and I think that p- brands are looking for people, hopefully like us and hopefully like our community that are just like real stories, you know, real people, real consumers using product and want to tell those stories. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. Like, I can't believe the consumers can't see right through this crap, right? They've seen it so many times and it's so obvious that it's paid for stuff that but they don't seem to see it today. And I don't necessarily understand that, but moving on, if you had to give some advice to a couple young ladies that were looking to start a business tomorrow, what would you tell them? Uh, have a business plan, you know, have some structure, you know, you don't have to follow that uh, road plan all the way through, but, you know, having an idea of what you're creating, what, are you fixing a problem? Like, is there a problem that you're fixing or is there something that you're putting out there that feels different? Um, you know, and uh, I think putting something out that's good is really important right now. Um, you know, there's so much, there's so much unnecessary product or brands or companies or coaching sessions and all this stuff, just a lot of noise. So I think whatever you put out there, you want to say like, someone you know there's people that can really use this you know whether that's an app whether that's a a product whether that's like i said a coaching site, whatever it is you want to say like people can actually use this i'm not just doing this so i can make money i'm doing this that this could be useful um at the end of the day and i think just stay positive i mean you know we have uh team members and they'll say to us like i just contacted a hundred people and i haven't heard back from anyone and we're like Sometimes you just get one in a hundred, you know, and it's like, you have to That's stay positive typical, right? because yeah, as it is, it's like one yeah. in a hundred, but that one could be awesome. Like it doesn't matter. 99, the 99 other people just missed out on that opportunity. I always say, so, you know, you just have to stay positive. I would add to always have a good accountant, a good lawyer, whenever you're creating a business, I think those are Usually yes. the number one, number two. <laughs> For me, creating. good lawyer is always yeah. in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. um, I tend to get myself in a little bit of trouble here and there. So, And, you know, to the point of the business plan too, is you want to create, I always think it's creating a, a solution to a problem that you're experiencing because you're going to know how to shape that product or that service the best because you are the end user for that. Uh, and I think when you do that, you know, that's why you have the Jennifer's with the Spanx of the world, because it was a solution to her own problem. And, you know, it was for a lot of women's problems. Um, so I think something of that nature is always good to think about, you know, what, what's, what solution am I trying to solve here? And has this been done before? Right. Now, JJ, you said a little bit ago, and it's a number that you said specifically, that's the that contradicts one that I'm used to hearing. 17 touch points today before somebody makes a purchase. And now it's been a minute since I've been in marketing school, but I've always heard eight to 12 and I've got a campaign that does 13 contacts in 30 days is what my standard has always been. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What that 17 touches really means before you do a conversion? And is that the new average or is that an online average specifically? It was a recent article that I read that was now like, I would, I forget what, which article right. it was, but it, okay. I remember the number. Cause I was like, oh God, 17 touch points. I, I don't and think it's very far. If, if it's not hundred percent accurate, it's yeah. in the wheelhouse and it makes sense as our attention spans goes down in a TikTok world that we have to touch more because our touches are so much less impactful. Yeah. And you know, you used to have, you heard it on the radio, you saw it on TV and you read it in a magazine. And then you're, you have that confidence to make that purchase, but now we get in an email, we might see it on TV. I don't, you know, you might be listening into on Spotify with commercial. And now you have all these social media platforms and oversaturation of how you're marketed to. So, you know, when we talk about clients and we talk about campaigns, we talk about the pain points, we always, always talk up the power of reviews. 
if that's a takeaway for you today, it's just make sure that you have people that even if it's your friend and you have to, you know, pay them to buy the product, make sure you're, you're obviously putting out a product that is going to get a glowing review, but you know, that trust buy-in is so important because of all those different touch points that you have to get through and get through that noise before that conversion is made. So, you know, the trust of the review is just huge when people can say like, oh, okay, well, 50, 53 of them replied with four to five stars. I mean, even when I buy, you know, furniture online and I'm, I can't be able to touch it or like, you know, sit in it and see how sturdy it is. It's right. like, you, you look at the reviews and see, was it, is it a piece of crap? <laughs> and even more so important funny. than the, the social proof of reviews is wildly important. But folks, if you've got a business and you're not focusing on getting reviews and Google and Facebook recommends and all those things, you're making a vital mistake if you have a local business. Google is looking at how many reviews you have. And if you have more reviews and better reviews than your local competitor, Google will put you above them in that in that holy grail of the Google three pack at the top. Reviews are a big part of your Google of your search engine placement as well. People don't necessarily believe that or think that that's true, but it's absolutely true. I've done the Google certification. I know it very, very well. Reviews, more reviews will get you higher rankings inside Google because Google thinks or knows that you're a better service than the competitors because you have more reviews. Yeah, you have to play the algorithm game and have to know what's going to get it. And, you know, even testimonials, if you can grab, you know, in your review and have somebody write you one sentence where then you can throw that on your website and just have a strong banner of testimonials, take it one step ahead and try to get, you know, a 20 second video testimonial of somebody trying out your product and saying why they they can't live without it. So. It's, it's oh, very, very oh, important. It's, it's yeah. so important for local business to really lean in on the reviews and, and for everybody. I mean, it's easier for local businesses to do it because you've got people in a local demographic area. Nationwide reviews are much more challenging for product than service, but it's still a really, really important thing to do. And today there's plenty of tools out there that you can use to do that. And I'm sure that you've got some advice and I've got some advice. If you want to ask me any questions, I'm, I'm more than willing to answer those. And Claudine, yeah, I got a question. Um, ha- oh, go yeah, I think also hashtagging, you know, hashtagging your brand on Instagram is important so that you could be searchable in tags, geotagging your business. So asking people who are coming in to geotag you so you show up there um, is super important as well. So, and then right. when you, you could use stories to run polls and surveys, surveys, polls, all of that is really important data. Data is like key. Right, and a little tip there, you can go, we'll put a link in the bottom on how to create QR codes. You can literally create a QR code, throw it on your front door that when they, and people scan QR codes just out of curiosity now, that just brings them right to a review link to your website, right? Um, the, also texting them as soon as they leave your business is a great way to get a review. But Claudia, you said a, a, couple, a little while ago, and it's been a minute, something about this internet 3.0, something I'm leaning in deep on. What do you think the future of the internet and how that's going to change your guys' industry specifically? And and we'll use this as our last question today because I know you've got a a meeting that you're getting into. Yeah, so sorry, sorry. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think definitely Web 3.0 is extremely important to take a look at. You know, we're already taking a look. You know, the the core of our business is all human interaction. Actually, Thomas Concordia, who uh, JJ mentioned in the beginning, the photographer, he actually was on the road with us making a film about human interaction, human connection in real life. So that's why we do what we do, but we're we're starting to figure out how we can also take that into the metaverse, how we can also, you know, work, you know, we have to know about what's happening with NFTs and that's such a big part, depending on what your business is, you, that might be something you wanna look at too, just because it's, you know, People are starting to pay, you know, offer crypto too as the payment um, in stores. You know, like one of our friends that we did something with, he had a coffee cart and you can only pay by crypto. So it's very, it's important just to know the foundations of some of that, whether you implement it now or not, um, you know, is up to you. But I think that, you know, 
there's uh, someone that I worked with in the hospitality side uh, for many years is opening the first restaurant that is all about, an, you know, uh, a coin, you know, it's token based, um, there's NFTs involved, really interesting concept, it's getting tons of press, but like, this is the future, like restaurants even. Um, so it's something that we have to think about, we have to uh, think about how our brand exists fully online in this in this metaverse. Um, you know, there's shoppable malls that are happening, fashion week on, on in the metaverse. So you definitely want to um, take a look at that. Uh, you can learn a lot, you know, obviously on Instagram, on YouTube, podcasts, as well as Clubhouse has been a big um, place to to join uh, to join spaces and, and learn about this space. Right. And I've got five things. If you're interested in Internet 3.0, things that you need to be thinking about are blockchain, NFT, AR, VR, and you can say metaverse, but I really lean into Decentraland way more than, than Mark's yeah. metaverse. Yeah, yeah. But and yeah, metaverse I mean, is in general, is right? Where all the fashion shows are going. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I, Facebook kind of coined this metaverse phrase, but it's really online virtual spaces. And, and there's going to be lots of metaverses that we can play inside of. Yeah, we'll definitely right. have a car. Watch out for a caravan in the in decentral land or one. We're working on something. Well, you we should definitely hit us need up that. because we've got a big VR play that we're working on as well. So awesome. it, and, awesome. yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. We've got a whole. I've dedicated about five thousand square feet of space just for virtual reality play playground for us. Wow, I'm going next week. There's a space that opened in Herald Square, the VR okay. space here. So nice. I'm heading over there to check it out. Um, but yeah, I mean this is. We have to know about this, right? So we will connect with you on that for sure. Absolutely. Do, it's a whole lot of fun. I, it's definitely, it's inevitable. And, you know, it's, I always say technology, the good, the bad, the scary, just because, you know, if you ever read the book, Ready One Player or saw yes. the movie, you know, it's- The book is so much better yeah. than the movie. Just yes. putting and it out I, there. And and the audio I, version is phenomenal with Will Wheaton reading it. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very enjoyable 26 hours of life. If you, so if I, I, hope, I hope we don't get to that point soon, but <laughs> we're there. We'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Before we go, uh, we're wrapping wanna, up the show. I, can I go add ahead. one more thing? I have yes. to hop off to go to this meeting. I'm so sorry, but I want to add one thing that we've been working on that I think is super cool for stores that are on the Shopify platform. So one of our uh, brands that we work with is called Qmoka. Allows you if you're on the Shopify um, network. Um, to be able to rebrand your store. So it's not necessarily Web 3.0, but it's almost like Web 2.0 where you're adding a, diman a dimension and almost transporting people. So instead of your, you know, when we before we started the show, I was like, hey, I like your step and repeat back there. But right. like you have, you're not in a white space or a blue space like me, you know, basic. You've been able to create an environment for yourself. So this uh, as we're speaking about VR, AI, AR, VR, all of this, Qmoka is really cool for those small businesses out there. I would recommend it if they are on Shopify to be able to mix it up a little bit. So like it allows you to do things like even bring people into the world about Valentine's Day. So like if you want to put hearts in the background, but you don't already have that, this allows you to do that. Or if you want to transport people to Mars, you know, like have Mars in the background or a beach in the right. background. Um you know, so like for those those beginners in this space, they want to transport, but they don't want to put themselves all the way out into, you know, into this extra space, right? right. Um, you can still do that. So yeah, just while we're talking about that, I just thought Qmoka, it's definitely worth yeah, checking absolutely. out for and, sure. And your marketing, it's so important that your marketing and your landing page that you're sending that marketing to has a consistent message. So if you have a Valentine's Day special that you're promoting, Makes a lot of sense to have hearts in the background of the landing page that you're sending those people to, right? And yeah, having and a your, your social content, your newsletter matches it, your invite matches it, your ads yes. match it, your Facebook, everything matches. Qmoka allows you to do that in a matter of three steps. You can literally awesome. change your store. So when we're talking about tools and things for entrepreneurs, not just Qmoka, but like go out and see what's available for your e-commerce store, see what's right. available. You know, like these apps and stuff can make your life so much easier. And Kimoka totally does that, is one of the ones that I think does a really great job of that. 
Absolutely. And if your listeners want to, that's a way that, you know, we can collaborate with them to see if we can do like a little trial campaign, if they are interested in kind of changing up some of their content for their social and their newsletter, have them reach out to us. We'll definitely, you know, get in touch with them and see if that's a potential because we actually have some big brand collaborations that we're going to be announcing with the client project. So excited about that. Yeah, that and then anything else they want to get in touch with us on, they could just DM us. We're on Instagram at Caravan NYC. So, you know, we might if they want us to come to their city to do something, if they want us, if we're going to we're going to be in Texas, Nashville, um, Arkansas, a couple of other in Minnesota. if you're in Before, Arkansas, you should swing uh, right up to St. Louis and say hi on your way home. Yes, we have to. Yes. We have to. But see, that's Absolutely. the thing. It's like, you know, if you're out in St. Louis, wherever you are, you know, hit we us up. We can do a live DM podcast. Us. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be fun. Awesome. You can see that'd our new awesome. VR room. Oh, we love that. That'd <laughs> yeah. be, we have to do that. That would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today, ladies. I know you're busy and you got stuff to do. Is there anything you'd like to leave the audience before we go? I think think big. You know, I think like, don't put, you know, think out of the box, think big, you know, and then anytime I always, you know, say window closes, a door opens. So, you know, just, just stay positive. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people will say no, you said that already, but don't get disappointed and just keep moving and grooving. Absolutely. JJ. I would say manifest what you're what you're thinking so think big and and manifest it and put it out there it can happen thank you for your time today ladies it was a blast talking to you i can't wait to talk to you again thank you that's it for today's show folks if you'd like to join my text line community you can text me at 314-370-2871 how you would join that community is ask me any question about business or technology and i'll give you an absolutely free unbiased answer get to work